Today, we're driving connectivity with Fergus Heading, Raf Tormans, Simon Cushning, Andy Fawcett, and Dan Large. Listen as we discuss the benefits of integrating end-to-end solutions on a forecourt, how to create an effective connected forecourt, how a connected forecourt can work for both a traditional fuel and clean service station, and the positive impact a forecourt connectivity can have on an overall refueling experience. Hi, thank you all for joining us for our Driving Connectivity podcast episode. Today, we're going to talk about the impact forecourt connectivity can have on both fuel retailers and motorists. So to kick things off, what do we mean when we use the term a connected forecourt? Raf, I'm going to come to you first for that one. Yeah, thank you, Jen. Well, customers, they visit the fuel station for many reasons, and filling up a car is really just one of them. They go in the shop, they go get a coffee, order some food, go to the restroom, uh, buy a lottery ticket, and even today, even more, uh, they go there for a fast charging session before they continue their journey. So the role of the fuel station is really transitioning into a mobility hub, and That brings me as well to the term connected forecourt, which I think can be described as a combination of uh, hardware and software solutions that exchange data to improve both the customer journey and at the same time uh, increase the operational efficiency of the fuel station. So so to add to Rob's comment, um, we looked at the word connected and the dictionary and what it says. So it says brought together or into contact, which also means associate, combine, join, link, relate, unite. So for us, that means that all the products that we supply, the solutions and services installed are all connected to to focus on it, which gives a high level of visibility at the site level. It also means that services like Wetstock management and monitoring tools have connectivity to all the devices on site. Brilliant. And Dan, let's come to you and get your opinion. What does a connected forecourt look like and will this change as the fuel and convenience retail industry evolves? So uh, our industry has always been advanced in in terms of payment technology and wet stock technology, which both areas require a, a high level of connectivity to lots of different systems, both on-site and remotely off-site. We also um, see some applications for digital media and remote monitoring of things like dispenser equipment. Um, We expect that we'll see a higher degree of connectivity uh, between more and more pieces of equipment on-site as we move more to a internet of things type approach on the forecourt. Um, And as that becomes more prevalent, we will see um, higher levels of connectivity. This will allow us to um, offer more advanced monitoring on equipment and better remote resolution of equipment issues. Um, As compared to today, you can do a lot of those items, but it's limited in how you do it. So we expect to see more advancements on how Um, equipment is connected and what you can actually do and talk to with that equipment. And with that, it should all lead to a better consumer experience because your equipment's running better, it's more uptime, um, and it's making the equipment that you have on a forecourt work for your motorist um, as they come in. Fergus, you mentioned earlier that a connected forecourt is a strong one. Can you kind of Go into a bit more detail about why a connected forecourt is better for fuel retailers. So following our journey around the world with with customers and uh, and providers alike, we see that the the goal they want is visibility. We want to see what's happening at a site level from a central point, from a web page, from a website. Um, This not only gives the, the customer a better view on what's happening from a financial perspective, so how well the site's performing, but also from a performance and a compliance, which is also key to to our industry to make sure they're comply to local rules and regulations. And one that we also see coming more and more into the foray is health and safety. 
So is everything performing as it should? Are staff being exposed to anything they shouldn't be? Um, which which helps. So, so from a visibility perspective, a connected forecourt is a better forecourt. Andy, is creating a connected forecourt complicated? Is there anything retailers need to take into consideration if they want to achieve this? Um, in essence, no. It's actually can be quite simple. Um, most basic forecourt equipment has, you know, connectivity capabilities. It depends what you want to do with it and what level of investment that you're willing to make. Um, as we operate all around the world, you'll notice that. Each forecourt can be quite different in some areas of the world compared to others. You know, some markets, a tank gauge is very common. Other markets, it's not, and they're still using the district. Um, it may well be that there's a forecourt controller on the site and you're looking to build out from there, really. So, well, you connect to the forecourt controller that not only operates your dispensers, can you connect a tank gauge to it? Um, mm. In our instance, you can even add probes to the forecourt controller that we supply. Then it's all around what you do with that data. That's when it can be get a little bit more complicated, which is around how do you accumulate all of that data that's flying around the site, send it to a central position, and then interpret that data, and how do you use that data once you receive it and have visibility of it? Yeah, of course. Raf, coming to you, how can forecourt connectivity benefit fuel retailers? Yes, yeah, Andrew was saying, uh, the success of a... Uh, a connected forecourt is highly dependent on the, the exchange of data between all the various systems that exist at the fuel retail site. It goes from the forecourt further to the shop as well. And I think for the fuel retailer, uh, it's essential to align um, the customer's expectations also with his uh, commercial objectives and uh, to increase the, the site efficiency. Um, one of the benefits is uh, increase uh, the site automation uh, to increase site efficiency and provide personalized customer experiences. Uh, this can go from also when you look at the shop, for example, when a customer arrives and he wants to order food, um, what you really want is that that order is being dispatched automatically to the kitchen, that the financial transaction is automatically registered in the point of sale and um, to the head office system for tax and fiscal reasons without any human intervention. When we look more at the forecourt side of things, then predictive maintenance uh, to prevent station downtime is, I think, key in this uh, connected forecourt, where combining various data streams can help and predict when uh, equipment is about to break down and that you can um, yeah, dispatch service jobs automatically even in the future. Um, I believe even Fergus mentioned increased safety. Safety is going to be a essential part which you can enhance with a connected forecourt where camera systems but other events of devices can be tied together to make sure that you can detect dangerous situations at your forecourt automatically and intervene. And then, of course, going forward in the future, I think these uh, uh, benefits can also leverage new technologies where AI is on the rise, where you can use these type of technologies to enhance that experience and enhance those uh, mechanisms even further. So when you look at all of these things combined, these are the benefits for the fuel retailer in improving operational efficiency. But at the same time, I think these contribute also to a better customer experience in the end for the motorists. Okay. Yeah, I think, Rob, um, you touched on a point there around um, the health and safety side of things. I think from, from, from the area of business that I work in, which is wet stock management, that used to be the key driver. Still very much is for a lot of our customers. Um, these pieces of equipment on a connected forecourt not only collect raw data such as sales information, stock level information, transactions and so forth. They also collect and provide their own individual alarms and alerts that are related to health and safety. So it may be a leak alarm, it may be a, a, you know, a water alarm. And as Raf said, the more of these alarms that the forecourt produces and they're collated and they're you know, effectively brought together, it starts to tell a story about what is happening on the site. 
And from a compliance perspective and a HSBC perspective, that's really important because if you get a water alarm, okay, it's showing that there's water in the tank. But if I'm also getting a, a sensor alarm from another piece of equipment on site that's telling me that there's water somewhere, or I'm seeing the data in real time, which is showing me the actual stock level of the water, I can verify whether or not that's true or not. So all of that bits of information is not just about sales transactions and linking that type of equipment together, but instead it's how you use that sensibly to drive compliance and also HSSC risk. To, to add to, to Andy's comment and, and Raf, um, the solutions that we provide are also for manned and unmanned. So the unmanned ones are, are even more important that we have this level of visibility and we can provide feedback to the customer to say, not only do they, you know, they need to order fuel, but that they have a potential risk uh, and it needs to be acted on because there is nobody there to lift the phone and say, hey, this isn't working. So connectivity is key for everybody. Yeah, and on the flip side, Dan, how can a connected forecourt benefit motorists? So uh, a good example of uh, um, this is using technology to deliver personalized messages. Um, so by allowing a fuel retailer to use their loyalty system to know who is at a, uh, a dispenser, the retailer is able to use that knowledge um, and know that motorists preferences to provide more relevant information than just offering say a generic promotion at the pump. Uh, th this benefits the motorist because it, it's more tailored, it's likely to be more relevant, You, the motorist can get benefits such as uh, personalized discounts or you know um, things like that, that is tailored to them. So they're more likely to engage with, with that medium. There's also the benefit of turning up at a, a forecourt and knowing that your dis, the dispenser that you're going to is up and running and in good condition. Um, that all has a link back to connectivity and remote monitoring, making sure that that dispenser is in the best condition that it can be, um, all to the benefit of uh, motorists, because I'm, I'm sure none of us like turning up at a, uh, a fuel station and it's uh, the dispenser's got bits hanging off of them or you have to use only certain pumps because you've uh, because other ones are closed. So the connectivity benefits the the motorist in in several ways some of it more obvious but others just down to having that fuel core up and running for when the motorist needs it to be there and i think it's the reassurance as well of uh, again what 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 that data shows so as you said if you pull up to a pump you can be assured that you you're getting what you pay for so the meters are on on target they're not giving away too much fuel or not giving away enough fuel Again, that can be done through remote diagnostics and monitoring, making sure there's no water in the tank. And therefore, as a consumer, you can rest assured that there's no water that's going to get into your car and you'll break down as soon as you roll off the forecourt. So again, from those practical elements of how that connectivity can help um, in the background, it benefits the re uh, the consumer, whether or not they know it's there or, or if they, they just think it's one of those things in the background somewhere. So how important is forecourt connectivity when it comes to decarbonisation and the energy transition? Can it be implemented for both traditional and clean energy stations? Simon, maybe you can answer that one. Yeah, happy to. Um, I would say it's an essential enabler for the energy transition, in fact, because when we think about it, what, what does the energy transition mean for our customers? Um, let's imagine um, we have a network of 200 or 2000 um, or more filling stations, traditional filling stations. Over the next 10, 20 years, um, this means I have to integrate more and more alternative filling solutions. Yeah. Yeah, and from DFS, for example, uh, we offer hydrogen filling equipment. We offer liquefied natural gas stations or biogas. Yeah, also EV charging. And then for me as an operator of such a station, it means 
yeah, I want to integrate this into my existing network. Um, so ideally I can connect it and I can use the existing platforms, for example, for the payment, um, for the reporting, for the price management. And this is why I say it's so important because it makes it easier for the operators, but also easier for the consumers. So when I come with my EV car to a, to a filling station, I want to use the same payment. I want to use the same fleet card. I can go in, buy something in the shop and everything simply works fine. Yeah, same with hydrogen or LNG. I have my, my loyalty card of the, of the brand that I use. Um, I can still pay at the pump. I can pay in the shop. I can use the, the um, yeah, shopping advertisement on the dispenser and so on. So that's why I say it's important um, to have this connectivity also with the clean fuels because it simply makes it easier for the consumers and for the operators. I, I can add a little bit to that. So thanks, Simon. On the more traditional fueling as well, because it's still on our, our customer networks, as we see the increase in ethanol blended fuel, bio products, and now even uh, HVO, which is this new hydrogenated vegetable oil for diesel replacement. Having connectivity to these sites means that we can update the customer's uh, tank gauges or wet stock management remotely. We're, we're, you know, we don't need to go back to sites. They can change the fuel as they wish. The, the, the products we install are future proofed, but we do, do, do need to change some labeling so they get the right descriptions and, and density on, the, on their reporting. But yeah, connectivity is important for, for all aspects. And finally, to, to round up this episode, um, a question that's open to all, um, how can forecourt connectivity help retailers meet the consumer demands of tomorrow? Yeah, again, for me, important representing the clean energy team. Um, so my focus is to, to have it easy for the consumers and for the operators um, so that I can use the existing systems and easily integrate alternative fuels. Yeah, sure. I, I, from the customer, the demand from the customer is really easy, secure products and solutions. And that's really the focus that we provide at DFS as well to connect everything from uh, legacy price signs or, and equipment to the new um, uh, clean energy solutions. Our objective is really to connect everything together. Um, to make that connected journey possible. And from the retailer's side, he needs to uh, <clears throat> consider which data uh, is getting collected to drive that positive change. And then from his side, it will be enable um, opportunities for upsell and cross-sell uh, towards the end customer. And from a customer's point of view, uh, it will lead to receiving personalized uh, deals and offers. Uh, which makes a win-win situation. So connected forecourts are integral to receiving uh, more information about things like dispensers on sites. And as we move more into energy transition into the future, it's more and more important to uh, understand the equipment that you have on site now and to use it to it the best of its ability with the view that whether a, a customer is ready to move to clean energy now or whether they're holding uh, to their traditional for a little bit longer it, it's important that that equipment is always working to the best of its ability and we believe that um connectivity on the forecore and remotely helps drive not only keeping dispensers and the forecore running for the equipment that you have now, but it will also be an integral part of that clean energy transition. Um, as Simon had said earlier about using current systems to make the clean energy transition easier, the current systems we, we see evolving to make the traditional fuel um, operate at the best of its ability as well. I think the, the, the voice of our customer is probably the best one to, to do. It's short and sweet. Uh, a connected forecourt is a visible forecourt and visibility is the key to all of this. Um, and only by connecting everything together do we get that true 
join the dots and uh, and see it as a global solution. Yeah, I think for me, again, the retailer, it's all about the data. They've probably had access to more data now than they ever had before. How they use that data to stay ahead of the curve, if you like. Um, their sales trends, you know, when they're busy, um, avoiding stockouts. All of this information that may have been a bit of a struggle five, ten years ago is now almost part and parcel of the connected forecourt. So they can use that to obviously improve the the, the efficiency of their sites, but also ensure that that consumer's experience continues to be uh, better than it has been. Thank you for listening to Driving Connectivity. We hope you enjoyed this episode with Fergus, Raft, Simon, Andy and Dan. If you'd like to support the podcast, feel free to share it with others, post about it on social media or leave a review. To catch the latest from Dover Filming Solutions, you can follow us on LinkedIn or visit our website, www.doverfillingsolutions.com.